Many of you have asked, requested, begged us to have a life insurance show. And while at first I was thinking, how lame would it be to be on a life insurance show every single week? The more we thought about it as a team, we're like, there are so many things as it relates to current interest rates and the current environment and in different companies shifting policies. And there's different concepts and strategies for us to talk about. There's executives for us to bring on. We could make it a goal to be the one-stop shop for a life insurance show and be able to create a community community of people, maybe advisors, people that are geeks in the life insurance space and just want to know what's going on for them to tune in. And so I first of all just want to say, we're doing it. And so if that's something that you're like, wow, that is super lame, but I'm interested. Um, I want to give you the ability to subscribe and, and just um, follow us along the journey. So we have a whole YouTube channel. It's called The And Asset. And this is the channel that ultimately we are going to uh, be posting this show. Um, Dom and I did the first episode. It's going to be him and I, and we might bring on other people. We might have other people on the team. We just want to create an environment where we're talking about current events, talking about uh, current things that could affect you, um, but then also just jamming about everything, what we call and asset, but everything life insurance. And so if that's interesting to you, make sure to check out the full show, subscribe to the and asset channel. We would love to hear from you. We'd love to hear if you have topics or ideas that we should be chatting about. Um, the next part of this video is a clip from our very first show that uh, we put out um, on the and asset channel. And it just talks about um, internal rate of return. It talks about dividend rates. It talks about different companies. And we just give a, a little bit of our view of where things are at and why dividend rates may not be the only thing that you should care about when it comes to overfunded life insurance. I'm going to list out some of the insurance carriers in their 2023 dividends and their 2024 dividend. And then I'm going to ask you a follow-up question accordingly. And then cool. we'll go from there. So We'll start with uh, Penn Mutual. Their dividend in 2023 was 5.7. Their dividend in 2024, uh, excuse me, 5.75. Their dividend in 2024 was 5.75. Guardian was 5.75 2023. They're now at 5.9. So they did a 0.15 increase. Mass Mutual went from 6 to 6.1. So they went up 0.1. Um, and then Northwestern Mutual went from 5 to 5.15. So of all the companies that I just shared, they all went up. They increased their dividend, which hasn't happened in a very long time because interest rates were going down. Now that the interest rate environment increased, all of them increased their dividend except for one company. That one company is Penn Mutual. I'm curious from just, it could be a, a ball, a ballpark long shot. You may have no idea. Why in your mind do you feel like that they may have decided to stay constant at 5.75 while every other company decide to increase it? You know, historically, Penn Mutual's trounced people when it comes to their internal rate of return. And people would be like, well, Penn Mutual, how can they justify this rate of return? And so potentially it's they were they were playing the long game and saying, hey, even we're going to um, subsidize the dividend. And instead of now, as interest rates go up, them continuing to increase their you know, re get building back their reserves. I'm saying that from a, I, I don't know that to be true, but that would be like my guess and would love to know your thoughts. Yeah. I mean, the only way we'd really know, right. Is if we like went to the president and CEO and said, Hey, like, what is kind of your thoughts and why did you guys decide to stay the same? Which is actually a question that we should, we should ask. Yeah. Uh, but here's my theory. If I'm just looking at it from the scope, I actually think that Penn Mutual is foresighting into what's coming into the future. So I do believe that people in general, insurance companies and banks, they're very reactive to like what's happening in the, the now. And you'll see, we saw what happened with a lot of the bank failures, right? They People did not expect the interest rate environment to skyrocket at the rate that they did. So a lot of these banks lost a ton of money and bank runs happened and the banks went under, so on and so forth. So as interest rate environments happened, uh, I think that the insurance companies just decided to match what essentially their their bond portfolios they were getting without maybe thinking about like what does 2024, 2025 potentially look like. I actually think that Penn Mutual was the smartest of them all by hedging their bets against what's to come. Because with the statement that I said at the beginning that the Fed is actually looking to cut rates again, and there's at one point in time in like December, there were seven predicted cut rates to happen in 2024. So if these things are going up and then they're going back down, it essentially is Penn is saying, well, we were profitable. We did well. 
we were essentially getting these high returns from our investment portfolio. But if we're going to hedge against the future, what we're going to want to do is try to make sure that we continue to not push out too much, knowing that we don't know what the future is going to look like. Versus on the other side, the other companies were more reactionary that they said, hey, dividends should be paid out more. We should increase it because current interest rate environment has increased. That's just a theory. Um, yeah. I, what did you know, Has Penn Mutual ever dropped their dividend in the last 10 years? Yeah. Every company over the last 10 years has dropped it pretty significantly um, just because of the interest rate environment continuing to keep but going. But Penn is by that. far the company that has, hasn't has dropped it as much. If you look back, it'd be good. <laughs> Maybe on a future episode, we could take a look at that because I think the other the other thing is like they still, if you do illustrations and you do an apples to apples as good as you can with apples yep. to apples comparison, they still beat long term growth rates. And so one of the other thing would be it's like this, some companies are maybe a slightly more reactive, and if interest rates drop, Penn Mutual could potentially just stay the same. Like people were believe it or not saying in the in the past. It was like Penn Mutual is being super aggressive. They're yep. they're not dropping their dividends like other people, and so I think it's I think it's cool the different perspectives and just thinking like long the long term game. Um, exactly. So it's, yeah, it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting, right? Because if let's say we go into twenty twenty five and every other company drops their rates again, and then Penn Mutual stays the same again. Penn Mutual will look like the hero versus in today's world of them staying the same. It doesn't look like a bad thing. It just looks like a neutral thing. And so like the ins other insurance companies like, oh, this is great, but they're staying neutral. But then if stuff does drop relative, and you and I know both know that it's necessarily not the end all be all depending on what the dividend rate actually is. Yeah. But if they do stay the same and everybody does decrease, it's just another thing that they can say of like, we haven't dropped it and so on and so forth many years. But I would say you're correct. Like from a consistency perspective, um, over the last 10 years, they have decreased it likely um, one of the more conservative numbers relative to some of the other companies. Yep. So one of the things that I'll, I'll, I'll we'll do our best. This is a promise to let us know in the comments if you want us to go for this is I'll, we'll try to get executives from these companies and ask them hard questions. And, you know, we have relationships with some and some will have to maybe call in a favor. But I would love if you are an executive of a mutual whole life insurance carrier, we want to talk to you. So just that's an invite and you you have a place um, at the seat at our table and we would love to ask you hard questions and hear how you got into the space and then your mindset as you're really in charge of thinking long term for for the thousands and hundreds of thousands of people that are insuring okay. their lives um, and portfolios with you. So that's just an invite that. and I look forward to the future conversations we're going to have together, man. I love that. Why do you think though that the the dividend rates don't necessarily matter as much, like relative to when we're looking at a company's performance and like the IRR and those yeah. types of things? D dividends matter a lot if you're with a company and you're comparing year to year. So if you were with Penn or with your Lafayette Life or Mass Mutual or Guardian, and their dividend is whatever it is and it drops, you can assume that you're going to get a smaller internal rate of return. And if it goes higher, you can assume it's going to be a higher rate of return. The challenge is when you compare company A versus company B and you say, well, you know, Mass Mutual has a 6% dividend and Penn Mutual is 5.7. If that's all we cared about you, what would the conclusion be? Well, Mass is better than Penn mm -hmm. Mutual in, in this example. Yep. And that's, that's not true at all. Uh, it, it all depends on your scenario. It all depends on the investment return that the companies are getting. It all depends on the type of risk and or what they have to pay out from a death death benefit or mortality standpoint. Yep. And it also, like not everyone gets paid the same. And so certain channels are more expensive to acquire clients. And so at the end of the day, dividends are kind of like a smoke. Like they, it's a, it's w what everyone cares about dividends, but at the end of the day, what is the actual result? And that's where internal rate of return, in my humble opinion, is the best way to compare Mass Mutual versus Penn Mutual versus Lafayette Life versus Guardian. And, and it, you can take the same amount of input and then say, in this policy, this is what I'm actually getting year 5, 10, 15, 20. This is the actual rate of return. And what mm -hmm. you might be shocked is it's not always the higher dividend that produces the highest internal rate of return. Yep.
I couldn't agree with you anymore. And if you st- if you just think about it logically, if a company is getting a 6% dividend and then another company is getting a 5% dividend, and then we design it for highly cash value with one company and design it for um, all base with the same company, um, how in the world can you say that you're going to get the 6% with the same exact policy and let's say somebody's younger versus older, someone has bad health versus good health, right? You can't across the board say 6% is your growth rate, knowing that there's so many other factors that get put into it. Yeah. So I agree with you that the the dividend scale, there's a thing called enforced illustrations. So if you have a policy every year and it's after the first year, you can get what's called an enforced illustration. So like Caleb said, if your dividend increased, let's say you got an, inf- an illustration year one, you, sh- you saw your numbers and then year five was projected to be like, hundred thousand dollars. If your dividend went up, the year five projection should now be probably like 102,000 because the dividend increased. The dividend current scale rate is showing in this current moment in time, what the future projections will be, which is also why we had this conversation with Bobby Samuelson. Another plug, go to the Better Wealth channel, watch that video. If you haven't, I promise you, your life will change if you watch that uh, all the way through. It's over an hour long, but there's so much gold on that, uh, that video. Um, we we essentially talk about that IULs, you know, they have these future projections that become very hard to analyze because these companies are overinflating what their numbers are actually going to project. Bobby was fully transparent and said dividends, on the other hand, do the same exact thing because we have no idea what the future environment is going to be. It just gives us a very good snapshot today mm-hmm. on what they could look like. Now we start having to look at the the infrastructure on a whole life versus IUL and how they're built and the chastity of like the guarantees versus non-guarantees, which is why we like whole life, right? It's more predictable than it is in an IUL. Even if the IUL potentially has maybe a little bit more upside from 1% long-term, right? Yeah. So it's just super fascinating when you start to have the conversation and you start to look at it. These these contracts yeah. are super complex. And so when you start putting investments and other things into it, it's very interesting. One thing I just want to plug real quick, I'm going to share a couple things. If you're watching this and and getting maybe excited or have questions about your own situation, um, we want to talk to you and we will, we, you can talk to someone on our team that's trained by, by Dom, by myself, by other really, really smart people like Bobby. And we would love to help you and take a look at what you're currently up to. And so there will be a link down below that says something like clarity call. And if you just want to talk to a human about your situation, we would love to give you insight. If you want to learn more about the and asset, obviously the and asset channel has amazing videos. The better wealth channel has amazing videos, but we have this thing called the and asset vault and you'll get the best, like here is the and asset content we have written. There's some really exciting things that we're doing. And if you're an advisor or a life insurance agent that's watching this and wanting to learn more, we're doing some really cool things. There'll be some type of call to action. I know where we host an annual event for advisors. And uh, if you want to learn more about that, you'll, there'll, it'll be some something down below. But just wanted to give a plug to people that are listening. Um, we, we definitely want to serve you wherever your journey leads you. And uh, that's one of the reasons why we're doing this show is to talk about current events and do so in, in a way where it's, it's relatable. Love that. Absolutely love that.